this is the part of the show where I start recording. So if you're watching on YouTube, you miss the whole part where I I had a little uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance references, and you missed it. I even played uh, some video from the ESO dude and some of his playthroughs, but you missed it. Instead, we're going right to this top story. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you have it open? Hey, hey, I don't know if I am ready. Where's Larry? I don't Larry's see Larry here. in here. Larry's here. Larry joined. Huh. Say hi, Larry. My sister's is... here, by the way. My sister is Ooh. Thelma. Everybody say hi to Thelma. Make her feel hi, welcome. Thelma. Make her feel warm. Or not. Or No, make her feel welcome. Don't, don't be mean. Unless you have to. Larry, <laughs> Larry's probably going to be mean to you, Thelma, because Larry is the worst human being ever on the face of the planet. <laughs> so <laughs> he's pretty much the is daily nemesis. That's who Larry is, if you must know. So we got this story where, where we get the title for the show. My mass shooting survivor trumps your mass shooting survivor. And the headline is mass shooting survivor calls out Parkland kids for exploiting the dead. Probably going to trigger some of you guys. I'm sure that I'm, I'm just sure there's tons of gun grabbers who watch our shows. <laughs> Are you are you with us, Ness? You're you're. I yes you're, yes absolutely. Are, are, are you, you didn't, are you, you didn't hear my type? Are you your Facebook? Hear my chuckling. Your face. You I'm reading the article. <laughs> oh, are you? It looks like I you're am, typing yeah. the article. So no no no. That's a, a, a An optical a, illusion. Right. So uh, unless you've been on the receiving end of a shooter's intent to kill, Niz. Don't you dare talk to me about gun control because, Niz, you don't have the same understanding that I have. See, that's everybody knows mm. that by now. That is the narrative from the right. youth supremacist uh, being pimped and pampered by the cattle. That's the qualifier, of course. That's the qualifier, that's, of course. That's how they open the conversation with right. you. Because everyone right. knows that unless you've experienced something, you can't be an expert. So don't talk to me about plane crashes until you've been in a plane crash. And uh, don't right. talk to me about. Right. Right. So, right. Don't uh, don't talk to me about war unless you've been involved in war. So all don't you anti -war talk people, to me about murder unless you've been murdered or or murdered people or either. Right. Either way. Either or is fine. If but you want to talk about if you've been rape, murdered, then you got all kinds of points. Right. And if even with rape, don't talk to me unless wow. you have been raped or are a rapist. Wow. Why I'm you have walk no away from you now, Niz. I'm walking I'm walking away from you now, Niz. I don't know. This if, is stupid. Uh, I just that, that whole this whole attitude, this whole attitude of just because we've experienced it, we are experts with a qualified opinion is it's ridiculous. Oh, Larry said, I'm here, Jeff. Uh, and John Smith added, as he usually does, you're doing great work, Larry. And he is, <laughs> I mean, as far as being the worst human being ever, he's, he's really good at it. <laughs> he's super <laughs> good at it. So super going to be a terrible person. So, so we got it set up. The first part is we're going to take your guns. And then the second part is, Unless you've been, unless you've been on the receiving end of a shooter's intent to kill, don't talk to me about gun control. And yes, that is the narrative. By the way, do you like that I'm calling them the Cattle Car Guide Club of America? I think that's, that's wonderful. Good. I like it. It's Sometimes wonderful. I call them the Cattle Car Gu Guide Club of America. Sometimes I call them the Cattle Car Guide in Waiting Club. Meaning they're waiting. They're waiting to fulfill their role of being a cattle car guy. Just like I yeah, personally that, that, like youth supremacists. Oh yeah. I personally well, like that one. Yeah, they're they're and they are. They're youth supremacists. They're standing up all the time. This is our time. What does that mean? I'm 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 fifty freaking years old with the, today's technology and everything else. I, right, it's I can not live unrealistic to, to assume I, what's that? I could live to be 110. It's not unrealistic to assume that I have 
30 good years of of productive aware functioning time left to me i'm not going anywhere so you know let's just say i get right, those right. 30 years. here's the thing here's the thing i don't get right i'm 38 when the hell did when the hell was my time when was my time how did wait right. i think i got skipped i think we got skipped i don't know any young generation who it was their time when they were 18 the world was handed to, to, to them, and everybody bowed down to the youth supremacists of right. that generation. I mean, I'm, right. I'm not saying that, that young kids don't have a tendency to think that they're superior to everybody else. But these guys, these guys are what's, – what's really laughable about this is that <laughs> why do they have the – I'm using this term very, very loosely – why do they have the power that they have? Is it because of their charisma? Is it because of their ability? Is it because of their resources that they bring to bear? Is it because of their talent? Is it because of their smarts? No, it's it's because so, however it happened, somebody identified that there was this group of journalists in training that happened to be involved in a shooting and said, let's pump a whole lot of freaking money into this and let's make sure that all of our news and networks that we own put these kids out in front of the world. So they're, they're saying it's their time while they're essentially doing the work a very old, very wealthy, one percent of one percenters. They're 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 working for the man. They're literally working for the man. The one that created all this oppression that they're complaining about. That's who they're working for. Good job. But that's not our story. I know Niz has checked out. He's playing Candy Candy Crush again. He's. How how are you doing on that game? Niz? Uh -oh. oh, I lost Niz. He wasn't checking out. He was frozen. So right now, uh, it's, it's a blank screen. So I'm sure. Let me try and call him back. We've had some issues today. So what I was talking about, it's not really the, the story. We're, we're, we're going to get to the story here, and I know I'm kind of meandering on my way to get that to, to get to ah, <laughs> mr nismodo it's nice Welcome to see the sky works just as well as the previous uh version that's always uh good job skype good job microsoft <laughs> so their updates works just as well as the previous version except now you can't find anything right exactly great yeah, good, good job good Good times, nice. good times. So, give you a round of applause. So, I'm sure you missed stuff, and that's okay. I was just ripping on them, on the youth supremacists essentially being tools for the very power that they think they're fighting. They're actually advancing the cause for the powers that be that they imagine that they're right. They're my fighting. favorite part, my favorite part of this entire story, is how they got all pissed off about the clear backpacks, <clears throat> and how it's uh, an infringement on their First Amendment rights, and they're pissed off about this infringement on their First Amendment rights, is they're trying to infringe on your Second Amendment rights. Isn't right. that ironic? Right, right. Alex Alex Pesterfield says, so hey, real quick, I have friends in the military and who are cops. They have been shot at and still believe in the property right to own weapons. Well, Alex, bear with me. The title of the story is My Shooting Mass... Well, the title of the show is My M Sh Mass Shooting Survivor Trumps... Yes, I use that word intentionally to trigger people. Trumps your mass shooting survivor. So I got something better than what you just said, Alex. Way better. So so after we take into the... You know, you you have to be there to to know what we're talking about that about you what well, you're going to add that uh they're just kids so how dare you speak against what they're saying even though what they're saying is already producing action that will land people in fucking prison okay in prison they will land people in prison for merely possessing tools of self defense we don't want them to have one of the things that 
these little kids have been, and when I say these, they've been successful. It's really, it's the billionaires, it's the 1% of the 1% that are behind them, that are pulling the strings, that are funding them, that are making sure they're getting in front of the cameras. It's really the billionaires' work. These kids are like Pinocchios going out there, except they're the sweetest, greatest Pinocchios that you can imagine. So, they're, but they're not even they're not even good. They're not even good at it. Did you see that? Um, I'm sure you did. I think you're the one actually who brought it to my attention. That that little uh, uh, that the smug little jackass that was on Bill Maher. Oh yeah. Uh, and he says, he's, "You're. Not, it's not like you're. It's not like you're born with those rights or anything." And then even Bill Maher was like, "Well, you know, uh, actually, you well, kind of are." That, that, that little novel, that little segment there, that's where I got the idea to start calling him youth supremacist. Because he's right. the guy that stood up and said, hey, right. hey, listen, you adults fucked up. You don't know what you're doing. You haven't figured it out. We are going to correct your fuck ups. We know right. better than you. So you might as well just thank us now for, for correcting your mess. Meanwhile, the only reason that he's there the only reason that he's on that show, the only reason he has a platform is because billionaires are paying for his tickets. <laughs> he's not right. there because of the youth. He's there because of rich, old, mostly white dudes. That's why he's there. <laughs> Sorry. Right. And then the little knob gobbler doesn't even have the freaking common sense to do a little bit of research before he opens his mouth. No, 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 he... He doesn't really, uh, but, but but he doesn't think he has to. He believes, well, I don't, I don't even know. I, I'm, I'm going to get back to the Pinocchio thing. So you, you've got, if you're going to have a puppet and you're a marionette, you have to have a high level of skill to work them puppet strings. Why is it that uh, Pinocchio was, was so attractive to the, the dude in the carnival with the puppet shows. What was his name? Whatever his freaking name was. Man, I yeah, the remember. bad guy. The the bad guy. The the low level bad guy. Not even the high level. This is the low level. Uh, why he was so attractive was because Pinocchio was willing to be a puppet, and and you didn't even have to pull his strings. He would just do what you want him to do naturally. That's what these kids are. These kids are puppets that you don't have to direct. You just find the kids that you know will do and say the things that you want them to do and say, and you give them the platform. <laughs> and the other kids at Parkland, fuck them. The other kids that are like, well, hold on. I don't know about this. Fuck them. They're not the right puppets. You're going to actually have to attach strings to them and by force manipulate them. These other kids, you don't have to expend that much energy, man. They're way more cost-effective puppets than... Do, than do you want to know who, what his name was? Yeah. I, I have his name. His name was Mangiafuco Stromboli. Will someone touch my Stromboli? <laughs> there. His name yes. was Stromboli. Dude. Right. That's kind of cold because I love Stromboli. Now, it's good stuff. Now, I don't know. So they got those two things going for them. And uh, someone peed <laughs> in their Cheerios. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. I'm going to get to the peeing in their Cheerios part. Right. And they, so. this, this guy was like, oh, yeah? Oh, well, yeah. I was. And I disagree. So it seems that uh, one of those dumb adults that these kids like to demean and ridicule has something to say to these kids. And really, when you're saying it to these kids, you're really speaking to the uh, billionaire 1% of 1%ers behind the kids. And and there's, there's, there's a little problem for these little police state enablers. The adult speaking has actually survived a mass shooting. One that... Uh, well, in terms of numbers, was was actually worse than than what happened in Parkland. Although I don't want to, you know, they're all horrible. But uh, this is a uh, 160 somewhere around there people killed, and uh, when you got the front man of Parkland who wasn't 
I, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to debate whether he was actually there or not. But I will say this: he wasn't in the same building where the shootings took place. We know that definitely. He's admitted to that. They were not in the same building where the shootings took place. This right. guy, the guy that we're going to be highlighting, he was in the same room. He was watching it happen. He was up, up close and in personal, in personal, up close. How the heck do you say that? He looked death square in the face and he didn't merely hear death in the building next to him. He saw it. And, and what's this man's take on what these kids are doing? I'm not going to say who it is yet, but some of you already know the story. But I'm building it up because, hey, it's what I do. He says, as the survivors of a mass shooting, I can tell you. Here's the hard part. In his, can, are you reading along with me? Do you see where I'm at? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Do you want to read? Do you want to pick this up? I'm watching the bouncing ball. Or do you want to pick this up? Sure. Uh, he says, as a survivor of a mass shooting, I can tell you from firsthand experience that all of you protesting and taking days off from school insult the memory of those who were killed and insult me and every other lover of liberty by your action. Want me to continue? Yeah. He goes on, on, he goes, on this, he goes on to that. add he goes on to add that the best thing to do to combat chronic abusers and disregarders of the law, uh, like the law against murder, is to pass another law. Genius. Uh, he wrote, but before we pass this law, we're going to denigrate the memory of uh, the memory and the and curse ourselves by exploiting the death of 16 of our fellow students for a few Facebook likes and some media attention. And look how well civil rights abuses as it concerns firearms help to protect me and my friends in Paris. This almost sounds like the plan of like a kid, maybe like a high school student. Oh, wait, that's right. Nice. Nice. I mean, he's square on, man. I mean, it's it. There, there's. If I if this if we were if this was commentary that we were posting uh, on a thread on Facebook right about now, I would post that Morgan Freeman meme. He's you know the right, one where he's point. Know. He's right. You know, that's exactly that's exactly where I'd go with it. Without a doubt. Right. And he pointed out something really important here. Paris. Paris has stricter gun control laws even than these kids are actually calling for right now. Just want to throw that out there. And I think that's 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 what they're referring to. So I imagine as I as I've written here is that it it must be really painful for the billionaire handlers of these youth supremacists. When an actual adult steps forward, one who's actually faced a trauma that at the very least is as, as bad as what these kids face. And I would argue, at least in the in the case of the front man, now I'm not sure. There's there's four main kids that you always see. I believe that all four of them were in a different room, but I'm not a, I mean, in a different building. Not 100 percent sure. So I don't want to say that with conviction, but I know for sure that Mr. Front Man that. He wasn't in the same room. So he didn't face what this guy faced. He didn't see people getting killed in front of him. And that guy, that guy who has more credentials than Mr. If, 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 if witnessing tragedy is credential building, to a certain degree, I guess it is to a certain degree, horrible, horrible way, he's got more credentials than you do, Mr. Dave. And, uh, and what does he say? And I'm going to give you a, Everybody, prepare yourselves. Uh, maybe maybe we should clip this part out and put it at the beginning of the show. So the TLDR crowd, crowd or the TR didn't DV crowd, didn't view too long, didn't too, TLDW too long, didn't watch. There's a TLDW version. Uh, hey, hey, Parkland kids, get stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> and. And at the end of the day, their feels uh, they don't trump our liberties. So, so you you got to have something more on this. You, you know, I I said a lot. You you've got to have stuff I haven't said yet. Like the fact that there, there's not really much. I mean, we can continue to beat a dead horse. I mean, 
I, I don't I don't know how far you want to that you will really want to go with this. I mean, I, I we've said I've said thousands action. of times already, uh, thousands of times that these kids are absolutely full of shit. Number one, they don't understand the concept of natural rights. They have no idea what natural rights are. They don't understand the Bill of Rights. They have no I would be willing to wager that they probably couldn't even name uh, an amendment to the Bill of Rights, other than the first and the second, they probably have no idea what the what the remainder are. They probably couldn't tell you one word for word. Uh, they they honestly they they just they're useful tools, and that's how they're being uh, that's how they're being used uh, as as useful tools, useful idiots. And uh, it's it's unfortunate. I said I don't know if it was if it was during the show or if it was pre-show because we had a little conversation about this stuff pre-show. Uh, I said I think I find it hilarious that that uh, you know their their big sticking point now after some measures have been taken uh, to uh, some preventative measures have been taken uh, in the Florida school system, uh, one of which was clear backpacks that they were all riled up and and upset That's and upset. angry because those clear backpacks infringe on our First Amendment rights. While you're ironically trying to infringe on everyone else's Second Amendment rights, okay, that's great, lovely. There's well, no irony there whatsoever. I mean, they they don't want to hurt kids, do they? They don't want to see kids die, do they? Aren't they willing to right. sacrifice their privacy? By the way, it's your Fourth right. Amendment you, right, you knob, but whatever. Um, right, o- opaque I, backpacks. You well, must they, hate they don't, children. They don't want to sacrifice their privacy and their right to due process. They don't want to sacrifice that to save children. They want to just let people be able to sneak guns in their backpacks. I'm not wow. for backpack. I'm not. I don't want to ban your backpacks. I'm just for common sense. Common sense backpack, backpack control. That's all. Right. That's all I That's want. It. I just want you to pass a background check and a mental health evaluation. And uh, you know, be licensed to carry that clear backpack because right. God knows you yeah. can probably still find ways to hide things in Maybe. a clear backpack. I can't imagine. We can't have people just button. walk. In. Do you know how easy it is to walk into a store and buy a backpack that's not transparent? You can hide you things know in. It's going to go to a school. Right. You know it's that's going the there. Matter of fact, they're marketed. They're targeting schools with their advertising. Right. right. I mean, it's kind of sick, really. Wow. I I think some some businesses have to look at some of these companies and maybe maybe consider severing ties with them. Maybe some financial institutions, maybe. Right, maybe and at the very look, minimum, you should have to show ID to buy a backpack. So John, you should be said, able to buy one if you're under 21. Yeah, that's true. That's. That's common sense right there. That's a good start. You don't point. need a back. You have two good. God gave you two good arms. Right. You don't need a backpack if you're under 21. You can carry your books in your arms. And you don't even need books anymore. Everything's digital. What the heck? Take your iPad. Hey. What the hell's wrong with these kids? Where's your Chromebook? Your little right. wiener. Yeah, just carry your Chromebook. John Smith said beating dead horses is Paul's specialty. That is a fact. And uh, that is Martha. A fact. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact. You know it's a fact. You've been that on the is, receiving end right. of hashtag the, true story. <laughs> right. I, I I mean it's not a thing that I strive to do. It's just is. It's a natural. I'm just really good at it. I don't even try. Uh, Martha says uh, no petting bunnies is Paul's specialty, and that is that's another no no Martha. Why not is both? That of, okay. Is that an of mice and men reference? There is, oh, is Martha saying that you're you like know what. It can now. <laughs> it can be now. I what what did he name him? What did he what's that? I will name him Tali and I will love him and hug him and squeeze him. <laughs> yeah. What's 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 the guy's name? Leonard or whatever. Len, it's Lenny is. and George, Lenny. isn't it? Lenny. Lenny. Lenny? I don't know who was who, but yeah, I could be right. that guy. <laughs> the bunnies, totally George. Be. Actually I really like bunnies. I would eat a rabbit. I would. I've eaten rabbit, it's good, but all in all, still, I love bunnies. Bunnies are cute. Did I, did I ever tell you that uh, what happened to my bunnies? Is this a sad story? We're about oh, ready to go to a darker freaking, story. It's freaking horrifying, dude. It's horrifying. How many people want to hear the horrifying bunny story by Nick? Do you want to hear the horrifying bunny story? Listen, 
Do you want to know a secret? Come on. <laughs> Nobody's okay, responding. So Go ahead. Right. Uh, I'm okay. going to take so, that. Well, that you're going to get yes. it whether you want it or not. Here's the yeah. money story. Paul, you're familiar of that that we had some rabbits, right? That uh, I remember. we, we yes, woke yes, up I the remember. morning and looked some out of them the window. Were and in the backyard were two giant, fluffy lion's head rabbits. And uh, my, my son said, Oh, the bunnies. And my wife said, Oh, let's try to catch them. Because they're obviously these these are not wild rabbits, they're domesticated rabbits, and they don't stand a freaking chance from the owls and the hawks and whatnot they're uh, when they're out in the backyard. Like, right, right, their days are numbered. Uh, so we went, we got some uh, fence, and we herded them in, and we caught them, and we brought them in and gave them a nice home. And then it turns out oh, they had goodness. they had babies, lots and lots of babies, wow. which is why someone let them go was because one was a male, one was a female, and uh, they had yeah. tons of babies. So we had a whole litter of baby rabbits. And, and uh, we, baby rabbits? No, this, is the, this part of the story is wonderful and beautiful. We raised... These rabbits, and they were wonderful. They were like housebroken rabbits, man. Cute. I don't know why rabbits. someone would get rid of them just because just because the female was pregnant. Anyhow, uh, these rabbits were awesome, man. They used a litter box like a cat. They were amazing. Okay, so I have a dog. You, I was just going to say, but you do have a dog. I have a dog, and my dog is a hunting dog. And yeah, he... Not a good mix. He, he loves rabbits. Yes, but he, he doesn't does. love them as friends. He loves them as lunch. Right. Okay. So anyway, they, they had the litter of rabbits. They had the litter of babies, and uh, we raised them, and everything was wonderful. We gave a whole bunch of them away, uh, posted a thing on the Facebook marketplace. So some of them made it out alive. All of the babies made it out alive, and we kept the two parents. We had the we had them spayed and neutered and all that, and we were going to keep the parents. Wow. And uh, With your we, hunting dog. Good choice. Right, but we kept them separate. They were, right. sep they were separate. Separate but, separate, but equal. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, that right. Ferguson. Or they were what, segregated. What was it? Yeah. That they were segregated. What, were segregated. What ruling was that separate but equal? Whatever. Right. So you did that. Uh, the dog got in. We we went out, and uh, while we were out, uh, the dog figured out a way to get into where the rabbits were, and uh, I guess a struggle ensued. And uh, we came home, and I'm so glad that I was the first one in the door before the rest of my family came in. Oh, because, you know, it definitely would not have been a bad scene with kids and all that kind of stuff. And oh, so I was able to at least spare them from, from seeing that. Uh, the dog, I mean, dude, it looked like a murder scene. Like, I walked in at first, and I didn't know what happened. There was blood everywhere and oh. all over. I was like, oh, my God, what happened here? And oh, uh, Amanda Baker, yeah. you wished for this. You said, um, yes, you wanted to hear this story. So, right. So the dog, needless to say, the dog got the rabbits. There was big fur piles everywhere and blood all over the place. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. But did they survive? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, they did not. Uh, there was a carcass. And the thing about it was, is that I couldn't be mad at the dog because the dog is doing what a dog dog's does. doing what the dog is doing. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's doing what he's what he's designed by God to do. I mean, this is what his mission in life is. You know, yeah. so I mean he I, I was at first I was like upset. I mean, I, I I looked at the door and I told my wife, like, stop, do not come in here. And she didn't even know what was going on at that point. I just said, Do not come in. Keep keep them outside. Do not come in. Do not. You know, and so I, I hustled around and kind of cleaned everything all up. Uh, was it was my them. son and my nephew. Oh, so you would have been two kids that would have been horrified, traumatized, scarred right, for right, life. Right, right. So uh, I hurried up and, and got everything cleaned up and and, uh, and and let them back in. But and I couldn't be mad at the dog, like I said, because the and he's like him? looking at me like I don't understand, like why I'm getting like the dog is looking at me and in his head I under, I know what he's thinking already. He's thinking, why are you giving me attitude? This is good. Dude. Why you, you throwing understand? shade at me? You can eat them. <laughs> that's like that's what he's like. You can eat them now. I got them. Why are them. you playing with your food, dude? I showed you what to do, man. <laughs> right, right. So I bring these humans up right. And this is right. They, so they, they throw funny. shade as as thanks. That's what they do. So so we know. 
So what the bottom you, line of that story. What did you tell the 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 little guy? The little <laughs> this guys? is the best part. This is the best part. Okay, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. And and like later on that that later on that night, my my son who uh, he's three going on four. You know, he looks at his cousin and he says, "Come on, let's go see the bunnies." Oh. And I'm like, oh. Uh, no, please. And they go out into like this, our son room, uh, which is where the rabbit cage uh, was at. And uh, my son is out there. And I said, I, I said, Bogey, what are you doing? I'm looking for the bunnies. And I'm like, oh, I looked at me. I looked at my wife. I said, should we tell them? And she's like, I don't know how. And of course, I mean, I don't know how either to explain this. So I just, you know, looked up and said, OK, we'll keep looking. <laughs> Hey, when you find them, let us know. <laughs> right, right. You know right, what? You so. could have really, you could have totally gas lamped them or gaslighted. What's it called? Gas lamped or gas lighting? What is it? Gas lighting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could have go totally gaslighted them and said, "What bunnies?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had all these. Remember there was, and there was these little bunnies. What bunnies? What was it? Wasn't there a movie like that with the kid or something on the plane? Jody Foster was in it. No, well, I mean I'm not doubting you. I just don't know that 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 would be weird. Let's get to our next story after, right, and this uh, next story is not so great. Well, it could be. It I guess it depends on how you look at it. <laughs> so this is this is our Skynator 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 segment of the show. AI could solve mysteries of the mind right away what do you think when you hear that title you got to have some thoughts i think the 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 solutions to those mysteries might not exactly be what they're looking for number one i mean uh, you've got kids all over the country eating laundry detergent so yeah but did you see what the laundry detergent looks like yeah it looks like laundry detergent i heard from chuck schumer when he, I mean, he's a grown adult man. He's a senator. He's a very important man. He's a smart, intelligent, very important. He's better than us. He rules over us. He makes decisions that affect millions of people. So, you know, he's a serious thinking person. And You know, he's he, got to be smart. And even he, when he saw them on a desk, he thought to himself, those look tasty. Should I eat them? Right, just do me a favor. Do me a favor right now, folks. Go get up. Get up. Go to your laundry room, pantry, whatever it is that, that where, where you do your laundry. I want you to go and I want you to get one of those detergent pods. I don't want you to look at it. Yeah. And I want you to think to yourself, would I fucking eat this? Oh, oh, you know what? I can hold on. We, we need Put, get it up. Yeah, right. Put yeah, it up. I'm Put it up bring on the screen. Up the visual here. Yeah, let's get some let's get some some tide pottage there. Yeah, let's let's go to this here. There we go. There Get we it go. Up there. It's up. Take a look at that. Take a look at that, folks. Yeah, take that I in. I want you to ask, take ask yourself, in. ask yourself, would I fucking eat this? And it's, if the answer is no, then you are miles ahead of Chuck Schumer because he is a potato who said they look delicious. And he would eat them. He, well, I didn't say he would eat them. He was tempted. He was thinking they looked delicious. They looked like candy. And this is back in 2014 or something. And even back then, he wanted to push for legislation to force Tide to change its Tide Pods because they, quote, unquote, look delicious. If you guys are looking here, you could see, like, the plastic edge perforated thing around there and... I, I mean, they look kind of cool, but I don't know. I don't know if I would say they look delicious. So this AI, delicious. as it probes the mysteries of the human mind, it might not come up with the answers they're looking for. I might don't know. might not come up with the answers that not you sure. want to see. Right? <laughs> right, right. You might not like what you find. So, so thanks to AI, though, the mysteries of the mind may soon be revealed. We might soon learn the limitations and potential of the human mind in very short order. Uh, now, the big thing is this. 
how the data is interpreted and how those with power choose to exploit the data, as well as how they're actually going to program the AI to evaluate things. Well, that that's something that remains to be seen altogether. Do you want do you want to read the excerpt here from economictimes.com? Can you do that? Sure, I definitely will. This is from uh, economictimes.com. Cognitive neuroscientists are using newly developed artificial intelligence networks to enhance the understanding of one of the most elusive intelligence systems from which they've learned, the human brain. In the work presented on Sunday at the 25th Annual Meeting of Cognitive Neuroscience Society, or CNS, Aude Olivia of Massachusetts Institute of Technology and her colleagues are learning much about the role of contextual clues in human image recognition. By using artificial neurons, essentially lines of code and software, along with neural network models, the researchers can parse out the various elements that go into recognizing a specific place or object. The fundamental question, according to Olivia, the fundamental questions cognitive neuroscientists and computer scientists seek to answer are similar. She continued, they have complex systems made of components, for one, it's called neurons, and for the other, it's called units. And we're doing experiments to try to determine what those components calculate. One recent, study, one recent study of more than 10 million images, Olivia's team taught artificial networks to recognize 350 different places, such as a kitchen, a bedroom, a park, and a living room. I'm going to call BS on this story. I don't think that they're coming anywhere close to mimicking all of the complex neural connections within the human mind to be able to build an artificial uh, mind that even will use the network the way that the human mind uses the network. So I think we're safe. Although what we're not safe from is they can produce BS studies from these and make definitive statements that aren't actually true. And from that, they can start to... See, my worry is that what they'll do with studies like this, you know, because, you know, it's science, it's settled. You know, the lab coats come out and say, it's settled science. And, you you know, the nature of science is that, you know, they find a truth and then they're done. No, no more questioning, I think. Or maybe not. Oh, oh no, the modern version of science is... They, the science, they, they, they find certain truths that fit the narrative and then they're done. So what they might do here is they say, well, you know, the, the human mind, it actually works in such a way that guess what? Boom, communism. It's, <laughs> it's the best thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Scientific studies reveal that it's right. communism. Scientifically or, or, proven. Scientifically proven, the thing that best suits the human mind for governance is 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 communism. Look, right, look, right. Look, these are the studies. Look at all these data. Look at all these. Look at these thousands upon thousands of pages oh, of data. If liberty. you don't believe me, you can't say that I'm wrong unless you go through all those thousands of pages first. Liberty. Then you've been shot at. You science <laughs> denier. By the way, breaking news: Martha Wilson. Uh, has written a novel, and it is uh, the world's shortest novel, but it is maybe, it's certainly one of the best novels that I've read in quite some time. And I'm about ready to read the novel right here. I hope she doesn't get me for copyright violations here. Uh, I hope not. She might. Uh, let's hope not. Uh, the, the, the title of her novel is uh, Arrow and Bow. That's the title of the novel. And here we go. Ready? Uh, there's only one chapter, chapter one, and there's only one page, page one. So chapter one, page one of Bow and Arrow. I had a bunny named Arrow, and my dog's name was Bow. Bow ate Arrow. The end. The end. <laughs> Fiend. <laughs> the end. Fiend. Uh -huh. That is like... That's like a, it's it's kind of it's kind of a cross of a few different uh, uh, schools of literature. There's a there's a there's a rom there's a, a romanticist element to it. There's kind of a, a 
I, I, I'm, I, 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 maybe a little bit strained, a little bit postmodern, a little bit objectivist, a little bit uh, hyper realist. It's really, it's, it's, it's marvelous. It's, uh, if you haven't gotten that published, Martha, uh, uh, talk to me later. I'm seriously, seriously, I think we can make some money off this. Seriously, there's, there's a film, there's a probably a series of radio plays. Uh, definitely. Uh, we got a couple other comments here. We got, uh, uh, let's see. Jacob says, I hate sweets. What's up with that? Jacob LaBelle, dude, dude. Oh, and now <laughs> I love this comment from Alex and I'm sure he was referring to the Chuck Schumer, Chuck Schumer being tempted to eat the Tide Pods. I want him to. <laughs> and he did say they're, they're fun to throw at each other, but he wouldn't know. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Uh, Tammy, hey Tammy, I haven't seen you show up in a show in a while. It's good to see you, Tammy. Tammy Hogue, did I say your name right, Tammy? Tammy Hogue, I never get your name, the last name right. Only if it has OxyClean in it. Kidding. <laughs> Oxy, Oxy, yes, yeah, Oxy. And uh, let's see. Uh, Alex said Rush switched to OxyClean when he lost his dealer oh huh. that's oh that's that's gotta hurt jacob i know it was a joke uh becca hi becca how you doing she said tide pods looks a little like candy wrapped in some sort of rice paper yes that's it if you know they're fucking laundry pods then you shouldn't be eating them and they do not smell yummy how would you know Unless you like uh, rating flowers or rotting flowers, I tend to, in general, smell flowers and go, pretty, but not for eating. Not for eating. Definitely not for eating. And Martha said, when my dad recorded me crying, oh, my dad recorded me crying about Bo eating Arrow. Oh, my gosh. That could be the bonus when we make the movie. That could be the bonus coverage at the end. Right, very, that comes you know, after like, the credits. Yeah, after, after the, the credits. credits run. Right, right. <laughs> Just listen to you crying. <laughs> Was it a video or an audio? But but back to the AI story. Uh, yeah, the, the, this is this. I I don't think they're on to this. I call total BS. And the only thing that worries me is if people actually try to come up with studies that that show that AI has figured fundamentally how the human brain works and some and you know it advances whatever i mean today the narrative might be communism or socialism or sjw or whatever tomorrow it could be it could be the alt-right it could be something else completely different whatever it is you know they'll they'll create the social pressure that if you deny what the scientists are saying with their thousands upon thousands of pages and the, all the scientists that signed on board to say this is the case, uh, then you'll be you'll be you'll be called a science denier. I mean, I'm not saying that they've ever done that, but it, it could happen. Now we're ready. Are you ready for the for the best part of the show? The best part. We saved the best on for to last. The best. I think we saved the best for last. Did you see the story? Did you did you look over the notes and see the stories that I picked? I did, I yeah. The story. Yeah. About thirty seconds before the show started. <laughs> <laughs> right after because I woke up from napping. my nap. Right. Right. You were napping right to the very end. So this is printing your own phone is not far away, thanks to four in one three D printer. So some some people are calling this a four D printer and some are calling it a Four in one 3D printer, whatever you call it, there's a new printer in the development stages that could soon make it possible for you to literally print out your own smartphone right in the middle of your home. Take it away, Diz! And robots. Oh, yeah, and robots. And, and robots. Yeah, can't, can't forget part, the robots. <laughs> that part I know that's you love. A, that's super important. Uh, a prototype 3D printer has, for the first time, combined several printing methods to enable researchers to produce devices out of multiple materials in a single print run. So far, the machine has created basic electronic devices, but the technology brings materials uh, scientists a step closer to their goal of printing complex equipment such as robots or smartphones. 
The printer is being presented at a meeting of the American Chemical Society in New Orleans, Louisiana on the 21st of March. That was a few days ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, a story. Uh, according to Juan He Zhao, a material scientist that at, of course, at MIT in Cambridge, um, who was, by the way, not involved in the work. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is a remarkable technological advance and a great leap for the field of 3D printing. Thanks a lot, Schwan He. Uh, the most common 3D Look printers heat. <laughs> he's right, right. Why, why are you talking to this guy hey guys, if he's got let's nothing? Get to... some quotes from people that were involved. Okay, <laughs> I got a number of them. Hey, but I got this quote from this guy over here. He wasn't involved. Let's oh, use that. It. One. Let's use that one instead. <laughs> right, right. Great job. <laughs> That is quality journalistic work there. Right. The most common 3D printers heat a plastic filament and lay it down in repeated lines, building a layered structure from the bottom up. This is the tech. This is the technique used in inexpensive consumer models. Several other 3D printing methods have also emerged in recent years, including spraying fine streams of aerosols, printing with liquid resin that is then cured to form a flexible polymer. Laying down thin layers of ink that are dried and hardened when exposed to light, and even printing ink that contains conductive nanoparticles to produce wires and circuits. Each printing technology has its own limitations. According to Jerry Key, material scientist at Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, who led the design of the multi material printer, oh, he saying was we put four 3D printing technologies under one platform. That's pretty cool, so, dude. Just, you're, are you getting how significant this is, right? Right. This is this is amazing. This is this is far, far beyond the the, the dinky little pieces of of, of of plastic that you can printing print out now. Knickknacks. This is right, right. Basically, now you're printing out knick knickknacks, uh, as as you as as you uh, had pointed out. This goes so far beyond that because this is the ability to print complex electronic. Devices. This is yes. this is no longer paying. What was the iPhone X? Uh, Twelve hundred dollars or something like that for the iPhone my X. Phone? This is my. It's eight hundred bucks. Right. This one. Right. V30. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I I've got an iPhone. This iPhone was I think seven or eight hundred bucks. This is no longer paying seven or eight hundred dollars for this. This is going to your favorite torrent site and downloading the blueprint. Right. Mm -hmm. from your favorite torrent site and printing it out at your house for pennies on the dollar. So there, so there is that home manufacturing, uh, uh, microfacturing aspect. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what microfacturing is, uh, look it up. It's something that I'm trying to watch as well. But, but, but also, this is local community manufacturing because it could very well be like, you know, if there's a community shop, that can buy the materials in bulk and buy them at a cheaper price, you could still end up paying less to have your community shop print these things out for you than printing them out at your own home or, or right. some combination thereof. But right. This is, know, I don't have to go to, this is, I don't have to go to Best Buy to buy a laptop. I don't need to go to Tiger direct to order parts for my laptop or computer uh, or cell phone or whatever it may be. This is, I can push a button on my current device and print out what I need at home, or I can go to a local business that supplies this uh, uh, this technology for a minimal fee. And this, th th I'll tell you, man, this kind of stuff is going to re it really it's it's going to revolutionize not just the world but economics itself. Well, what what this three D printing? If you go to iState.tv, you will find. I, I do the bulk of my content production Monday through Thursday. So I'll say if you hit it on a Monday through Thursday, that's when you're most likely to see new articles. And you're you're almost on almost every day, Monday through Thursday, you'll find another another new article about what's going on 3D printing. It is one of the technologies that I think is is a fundamental game changer. To be sure, there's macro applications that are involved with 3D printing and and the macro folks they're trying to co-op 3D printing and make it theirs but I don't think that they can they put the genie back in the bottle as far as the no. power of 3D printing mm. to to basically 
enable the emergence of a decentralized, highly localized manufacturing market <laughs> that doesn't right. exist today. And I'll tell you one of the market. one of the things that I'm most interested in when it comes to uh, to, to three these. The, let me get my tongue straight here. Yeah. When it don't forget, I just woke up from a nap. Uh, when it when it comes to 3D printing, one of the things that I think is going to be the biggest game changer is 3D printed food. I've talked about that. I've 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 covered that on iState as well, dude. There's 3D printed food. There's uh, 3D printed medicine. <laughs> yeah, 3D printed medicine. 3D printed. Uh, there's bioprinting. So yeah. It's it's going to be a different world that's going to emerge. I, I just want to 3D print my weed, man. You might be able to. Sometime. Can I 3D print my weed? I don't know. I think growing it will probably still be better, but I don't know. I don't know. You could someday 3D print your meat. Right now it's way too expensive. But I remember I, I first found out about 3D printing back in 2001, and I was immediately hooked onto it. And I've been following it since 2001, and it was really, really primitive stages back then. In 2003, I started an on, my first online publication called FTAL, and it was a weekly publication, Freedom Through Autonomous Living. And 3D printing was, back then, it was one of the key technologies, and I always had this dream. I think I've said it on a show before, I don't know, a long time ago. I'm, it's bears repeating. I always had this dream. There's a lot of dreams I have with 3D printing, but one of them is you go to a car dealership and you and you're and there's gonna be new designs, so so you might see like some designs on display and they'll show you some some cars that they've printed out so you can touch them, feel them and all that. But then you can go there and you can also say, you know what? I want a 53 Buick Skylark, but I w obviously I want I don't want it to right you want current technology tech. of right. a 53. I want it to be modernized and kick butt and you know whatever the latest you know and I might customize it a little and tweak it a little and and I might I, I order my 53 Buick Skylark and I go home and maybe after maybe a week or less I'm thinking a week so uh. I go home and then I and then they call me up and say, "Okay, your your Skylark is ready." So it's, you know, 3D printing cars on demand, but the way that I envisioned them doing this. And this is part of the element of what's going on with 3D printing. I've already seen some very primitive versions of this. So you're going to have like a liquid vat. And the liquid vat is hooked up with all of the the raw materials that you need to build most things. And uh and they have nanobots. And so then they enter in the design, and then the little nanobots, they take the materials and they build from within this liquid vat from the inside out, and then all the liquid is drained away, and then the car rolls out. That's, that's been my fantasy. That's, that's, that's what I want to see. Why not, cool. at your own, why, not, why not in your own garage? Um... That would be a, a lot of expense to build one car that I might use for <laughs> right five right years. right you know now that you said that I just thought that I just my my own response to myself in my own head was have you seen the price of printer ink <laughs> can you yeah, imagine I, yeah, what the cost I don't, I don't think everything's going to be printed at the home I think some but I think that manufacturing manufacturing on demand so, you know, all, all that upfront cost, you want to go into business, you want to go into car business, you know, you don't, you don't have to pay gazillions of dollars to build a bunch of cars and hope that people will buy your cars and you got to figure it out. No, you got cool designs. They come to your showroom and I mean, <laughs> and people, I think that people will by and large, all things being equal, if you can produce a comparable price to a larger scale, less local uh, source, people will pick local. All things being equal, if you're if you can't compete, then they won't pick local. But if you can, 
they're going to go down to your local car dude, car person dude. It, it might have his own particular flavor of car designs as well. So, so I think you're, you're going to have much more local manufacturing, which is going to, I think it's going to help create, it's going to help change, it's going to change people. It's going to, they're going to build an expectation that is more localized, that is more self-reliant in nature because they're experiencing it. They're living it. They're going to be less inclined to sign up for large-scale systems that make them dependent. I mean, if anything, what are we seeing now? We're seeing this huge, I mean, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, you can argue whether it's neoliberal or not, but I'm just going to use that phrase. And when I say neoliberal, I'm only uh, re referring to one particular tactic that the neoliberals were using, which is use the marketplace to push people towards their more socialist type of, of, of agenda. Uh, yes, use the marketplace to do that. And, and you're seeing that tactic being powerfully used because you have a small number of really incredibly huge companies that are enmeshed with the state that are run by statey progressives for the most point, most part. So you see the danger of signing up for these large scale systems where you're dependent on them and they have incredible amount of power over you, especially when those large scale systems have, have guns backing them up. They have gov guns backing up and, and, and assuring that uh, any serious competition uh, doesn't have a, a a realistic chance to 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 vie for the crown, so to speak. So this is this is going to upset all that, and they're going to do everything they can to try to slow that down. They're going to do everything they can to try to own these these self reliant local empowering technologies. But I don't think at the end of the day that they can stop what's coming this is why short term i'm very pessimistic i'm not just pessimistic i'm pissed i am angry at so many things that i'm seeing like i am i am i won't say i'm fearful but i'm highly concerned for the safety and welfare of many people in including to a certain degree myself and and definitely for my family but i feel like if I can make it through this 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 initial period of time where they're going to they're going to try to press and have even more controls, way more controls than than they already have. They're they're going to become increasingly more oppressive and it's going to be a really dangerous dangerous time for a lot of people. But it's going to be a short window. They're not they're going to consolidate power and they're going to look like they've won, but they're not going to be able to hold on to the victory. Unfortunately, though, a lot of people, they're going to die. They're going to be imprisoned. Their lives are going to be destroyed in the process. So short term, I'm extremely skeptical. But midterm right. and even long term, I am extremely optimistic for the chance for liberty to reign, at least for a period of time until the balance of power and technology shifts once again, towards large scale systems, because right now it's it's definitely tilting towards small scale. Yeah, but it's like you said, the cat's already out of the bag, man. Yeah, cat's yeah. already out of the bag. Yeah, the cat's know, it's, already this out is the same the thing with cryptocurrencies. Same thing. Same cat's thing. out of the bag. Same thing man. with crypto. Same same thing with blockchains. Yep. These these <laughs> decentralized structures. Computing. Right, right. These decentralized structures. These decentralized systems. The cat's already out of the bag. You're not putting that sucker back in there. And it's not happening. I, I did a not happen. I did a I did a story recently on uh, uh, some company. I forget was it Japan? I can't remember where it was. Anyway, it was a company that produced uh, was it called a terahertz computer chip, and uh, like at a cost efficient level, uh, and uh, they had solved a lot of the the overheating problems. So you imagine if 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 just anybody can have the power of the processing power of terahertz chips computers in their home. That's that's a game changer. Suddenly 
you know, a small group of independent people can come together and have the computing power that once took billions and billions of dollars that only large scale systems could afford. That's just one of the many stories. I'm actually so looking I, right. I'm actually looking right here. I, uh, uh, David Freeman, I came across this post in my, uh, in my Facebook feed from David Freeman it says zero net is the next big thing. Check that shit out. So I followed David's uh, instructions, and I'm checking out ZeroNet. And it is uh, open, free, and uncensorable websites using Bitcoin cryptography and BitTorrent network. Uh, uncensored, it's nowhere because it's everywhere. No hosting costs. Sites are served by visitors. Always accessible. No single point of failure. Simple, no configuration needed. Download, unpack, and start using it. Yeah, yeah, that that takes, I mean, look at what's happening with, you had like recently the 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 domain host for, I think it was Gab, was trying to boot Gab uh, because, again, these large-scale systems, you know, they, a small amount of people own these large-scale systems, including web hosting and domain name uh, providers, and a lot of them are highly, highly motivated to use their market power to try to socially engineer the world. And yeah, the the more the large the more large scale the systems are, the easier it is for a small number of people to do very bad things. And but again, the large scale systems are failing. The small scale systems are rising. Wherever you can, always choose the small over the large. And I'm not saying there won't still be some large-scale systems in the future. I, I can't predict that. Uh, it's just going to be a whole heck of a lot less of them. And I do believe that uh, if, if you're willing to make sacrifices, like right now in order for you to leave large-scale systems, yeah, it would take tremendous amount of sacrifice. It'll take a tremendous amount of loss of... <coughs> I'll say this is this is kind of subjective, but I'll say loss of quality of life to choose. But in the very near future, you may you may lose something by by turning away from large scale systems, but you won't lose nearly as much as you would lose now. If if the modern, I'll say American typical type of lifestyle is what you prefer, uh, yeah, you'll be able to hold on to that lifestyle uh, at almost to the level that it is now and still walk away from large scale systems. Whereas today, if you walk away from large scale systems, you ain't, you ain't experiencing that type of lifestyle anymore. I think that's a good place to end. You got anything more to close out the show? No, I think that's a, I think that's a good, that is a good place. It is yeah. a good place to end. Yeah. We started you off with uh, Pinocchio puppets, the most yeah. advanced high fi tech advanced, Pinocchio puppets of the 21st century, the uh, the uh, the youth supremacists getting the smackdown from the Eagles of Death Metal frontman. Then we took you to the scary proposition of Skynetter or uh, <laughs> Skynetter <laughs> of uh, AI allegedly mapping out the human brain, and we've left you with the wonders of the 4D printer or the four-in-one printer and what that means so this is our last is daily wednesday show i think that we're settled something might change but i'm pretty sure uh, we're pretty settled <laughs> pretty settled that it's going to be newsfire you'll see newsfire same time might not be the same place not sure about that but uh we'll let you know where we're at uh, uh whatever the case <laughs> might be or we might end up simulcasting because i may actually get another computer and i may actually like broadcast to two places at once i don't know <coughs> who knows it's possible actually with both niz and bodhi i could actually they can broadcast to two different places or one place and i can do another well niz might not because he's freaking primitive <coughs> he knows right. how to do it i'm a troglodyte well no right. you know now, i got a story i have a story for you i have a story okay. can i can i can i add this story in here 
Well, yeah, you don't have to. I got a phone. So you, if if you're a regular listener, you've heard my story previously about my adventures in cutting the cable. I uh, decided to to get rid of cable television and instead go completely over the web. And I use, you know, Hulu, Netflix, Cody, uh, just started getting, well, I, I haven't started using it yet, but I've been doing some research on Terrarium TV uh, and some and some some other alternatives. And anyway, back in January, we decided to cut the cable, did that, had a, had a huge fiasco there with the uh, cable company sending me $385 cable bills for my cable TV. It was a huge fiasco. It took us three months to get this whole thing straightened out. Uh, yada, yada, yada. It all began with a phone call to my uh, cable TV provider and my internet provider, Suddenlink. And basically I what I said that. to them was, look, I am paying a car payment for cable television, internet, and phone. I'm not doing that. If you can get my bill down to where it's like, you know, reasonable, and not a freaking car payment, I'll keep all three. They told me, pound sand. And I said, okay, well, cancel that sand. shit because I don't want it. <laughs> okay. You pounded sand. Right. I pounded sand. Uh, so, again, three months later, it took us to get everything straightened out with the billing because we had some atrocious, ridiculous bills that were coming. I was told that I, my bill would be $65, and then I got a bill for $385. I got a bill for $756. I got a bill. It was crazy. And every time I called them, it was a different price. It was a giant fiasco. Uh, so much so that I actually recorded a customer service call. And in that call that I, I recorded, this. and I posted this to the web. It's, it's also <laughs> posted on my YouTube channel. Uh, in this one phone call, the price changed three times in one phone call. So I got all that straightened out. Now, now this is already going back now to uh, the beginning of March. This is the beginning of March where all this stuff finally got straightened out. Now it is almost the beginning of April. I'm at work today. Phone rings. It's been ringing off the hook. I keep getting phone calls from Irving, Texas, and I've been ignoring them because if I don't know, you know. I'm not answering. You can leave a message, and if I like the message, I may call you back, and if not, I definitely won't. But if I don't know the number, I'm definitely not answering. And, and that's how that goes. So today I decided, you know what? I'm going to answer this call and see who this is that keeps calling me every freaking day from Irving, Texas. Hi, this is Suddenlink. I'd like to offer you a cable TV package for $30 a month. And I said, are you fucking serious? And the guy was like, it was silence on the phone for like good 30 seconds. And he said, absolutely. $30 a month will get you. This and this and this many channels and all this. I said, dude, where the fuck were you three months ago when I said I'll keep it if you could get it down lower? You know, I said, and my exact words were to him. I'll tell you what, buddy. At this point, after the quality and customer service that I've received from Suddenlink, I would rather watch a sock puppet show made out of a cardboard box stage in my living room then pay Suddenlink a single solitary <laughs> dime for cable TV. And he said, well, I see here you have our internet service. I said, and I, and I said, okay, I'm going to let this guy go. For $20 a month, I can increase your speed. I said, well, let me tell you, bud, where I live, the only option I have is Suddenlink. If I had another option, I wouldn't have you for internet either. Uh, you know, I went on to tell him how I pay X amount of dollars for this internet package and I'm supposed to get X speed and I don't get X speed. I'm supposed to get this down, this up. Uh, it was, it was a giant fiasco. Needless to say, he didn't get any money out of me. So, but they tried, tried wow. to get more money. The moral of the story is sometimes the Niz rant comes at the end of the show instead of the beginning. <laughs> right. And if you want to see a really funny YouTube video, go to YouTube and type in Ole Gobble, like oligarchy, but Ole Gobble, O-L-I-G-O-B-B-L-E, Ole Gobble. You will not, you will not be sorry. I promise you it story. will be worth it. True story. Promise you it will be worth it. Ole Gobble, just do it. Just, just do it. So I'll be back tomorrow on my channel, on uh, the Paul Gordon personal channel the one with the AR-15, uh, for headlines you may have missed, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, be doing uh, the last 
is Daily Thursday. Now, that's the one show I really, we still, Lou and I still have not nailed down the new name for that show. I mean, it's the same. We're just renaming. And by the way, if you guys want to know what we're, what we've discovered is if we're going to have an Is Daily Wednesday, Is Daily Tuesday, sometimes we, like, maybe for one reason or another, we miss a show and say, hey, why don't we do this show on that day instead since and we could flip them around. It's weird when you flip it around. Like if you we did an Is Daily Tuesday show on Thursday, so it was Is Daily Tuesday on Thursday. And we're like, yeah, uh, we can't do this. This this, this two, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday thing. Did not think that through. So that's why we're coming up with individual names for the shows. Uh, but anyway, we'll be doing the show tomorrow night. Hit right here, same channel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Myself and uh, Mr. Lou Sander. And then next week, no shows, nothing. This is my 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 Easter week. I'm following the Eastern Orthodox calendar, but but I'll be doing stuff behind the scenes. I'm going to be tweaking the iState site. I'll be creating new images and everything and bumps or whatever for for the for the shows. Uh, then we come back the following week. But Niz, why don't you give your promos before you know? Give your last promos here. Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern. On the Liberty Radio Network, uh, you can join myself and Mr. Matthew Taylor for the Torchwood Report. We talk about all kinds of stuff. Just depends on what flavor we're feeling for that day, whether it's going to be politics or tech or whatever the case may be. Sometimes movies, sometimes video games. Uh, just depends on what we're feeling. And uh, we would love it if you join us. We have a wonderful Discord chat over at LRN uh, that really needs to liven up some during the other shows. It generally is pretty lively uh, during Free Talk Live, but then when the other shows hit the airwaves, it kind of grinds to a screeching halt. Uh, so we'd love to get some people over there. I think Matt even uh, devised some sort of giveaway of some sort where we ask some trivia questions or something, and he could... I think get something. I don't know. You'll have to come over and listen and tune in and find out what the heck the deal is with that. Uh, I swear, eventually someday, I'm going to get uh, back eventually to doing the, the, the Trump Revolution show uh, on the Trump Revolution Facebook page. Uh, I did a few shows. That, though. Your show is called. Right. The, right. The Sunday Night Niz. Yes, uh, is, is the name of that show. It's Sunday Sunday. And if you want to look at some of the past shows that I did, you can. All you have to do is go to Facebook and type in hashtag Sunday Night Niz uh, in the search bar. They'll come up. Um, you can also go to my YouTube page. It's just Jeff Nee Show on YouTube. That's real, real easy. Um, but uh, I, right, just that guy. Uh, I will. That? I will be back to doing shows. I had to take a hiatus. Uh, from that, because we're doing some home renovations and repairs. Doing some home and, repairs. And uh, Saturday and Sunday are really my only days to get stuff done. So it makes it really and tough to do a show when. So when it when it you comes back, we'll let you know, know how it is. Yeah, right. You when got it. Comes back, you know we'll let you know. So I want to thank everybody who joined us here for the last ever is daily Wednesday soon to be newsfire, uh, uh, as especially. I want to thank the folks that took the time to comment. Comments are crack to me, and I love my cracks. So thank you all who were successful in delivering my supply of cracks to me for this particular episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow at uh, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my page for a headline you may have missed, and tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander. Good night, everybody.